Today, we gyro a tule elk. You know what's different about a tule elk? Nothing. Nothing different. But because you guys dig watching it, and I like sharing it with you, I'm gonna show you how to clean a tule elk skull. I've already taken the two bottom teeth out for the state, and I've taken the two ivories out for the hunter, and they just left. So, <clears throat> same everything. I'm gonna cut him up the middle, right to the base of the pedicle, and then skin him around. I'm gonna do this kind of quick, so I can play some epic music for you. Thanks for watching. All right, we have removed the eyes, the jaw, and the hide. The next step is to wrap the base and the brow and maybe up the bay tine of that elk. Wrap it with shrink wrap, then a little electrical tape, and then a zip tie where that electrical tape stops. The shrink wrap will help eliminate the antlers from being discolored during the boil. Once you've located a pot large enough to put that entire elk head in, fill it with water. I add a little bit of OxyClean to help degrease, and I start a big fire up underneath it. We got to get this thing boiling. Once that skin has split on the top of the nose and you can see the bone, it's ready to come out. This elk was down in that pot for 45 minutes at a hard boil, and it was ready to go. I will boil this skull three full times for that duration. Once I spray, 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 get in every hole, every orifice, anywhere there's meat or tissue, get on in there and get it clean. And then I'll put it back in the boil, let everything tighten up one more time, and then continue the process. Man, you gotta love when it comes out like that. The next piece is getting the brain out. Now, I'm just gonna show you something as an example. I put the power washer in the brain hole, and you can see it just scrambling that brain, but it's only coming out the brain hole. This is why I knock out that auditory bull, the ear butts. I just stick a screwdriver in that ear hole, and then I smack it with that hammer, and it comes popping right out of there. Then once it's out of there, I knock a little hole with the screwdriver, and then you can see the difference when you're washing. It's coming out of all those holes. 
once that brain is free of all those connecting points, then you can take a pair of forceps, slide it in there. Once you hook it and give it a twist, it will make an actual sound where you can feel it sucking away from the brain cavity. It'll all pull out in one piece. On a big bull elk, I have a couple of tricks that I do to remove that real hard tissue. Their head is so big and the tendon in the back of their neck is next to impossible to spray off. So I take a wire wheel and I wire that clean. Remember, it's in the back of the skull. Nobody sees it. Get it clean first. And then when I knock out the ear butts, the auditory bull, I take a wafer bit on this bull here. I use a 7 8 bit and I open that whole opening up like a big round hole. It actually looks much cleaner with a round hole than just a uh, than just a hole that I knock free with the screwdriver. Those are my two big elk tricks. All right, here's a look into the pot. I don't know if I ever showed this, but this is the amount of oil that came out of that elk on the initial boil. It's a ton. So I empty that, wash the pot well, and then I fill it full of my peroxide mix, or what I call the White Bone Creations peroxide mix. 40% by volume liquid peroxide from the beauty supply and water, mix 50-50. I put that elk right down in there, and then I bring that whole slurry to a boil. And I let it boil for about 10 minutes. This is a real old Thule bull so it could take that heat. Then I just rinse her clean. I get off any loose debris. At this point, the peroxide boil will take anything that you missed and it'll turn it yellow. The skull will be white, the tissue will be yellow. Get rid of all the yellow and then put it in the sun to dry. Elk horns have so much debris on them. I like to put the mop and glow coming down so that I don't nick it and have it stick into the mop and glow. What you're looking at here is I'm just applying a coat of flooring mop and glow, just brushing it on to seal the bone, to keep the dust from settling in, give it a real nice lanolin smell and a, a good hand feel, just a nice way to um, make it look presentable. I let that bull dry for three full days behind a fan and it looks beautiful. Now I'm going to mount it to the Skull Max Elk Hanger. There's a two-part clamp that goes in the brain hole and then around a ball joint and then a bracket that goes on the wall so it can swivel and pivot. Here's a quick look. y'all wrapping up the Thule Elk project on the Skull Max. This is what it looks like. This is the reason I like the Skull Max. Is if you have a big room you can get it out there, kind of get it in your face. If you don't have a big room, right, I've got it super tight. You can push it against the wall anywhere I want it, right? I can move it anywhere I want, you know, say this bowl's got a strong side and this has got a weak side. I just move it any way I want it. Crazy secure, crazy cool. It's fantastic. Anyway, long story short, there it is. In California Thule Elk. Big, beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you very much for watching.